Welcome to Love Them Knives channel. And we do love them knives. Loch Ness. See? Oh, well, there is a Loch Ness. Oh, just not the monster. Okay. So this is a monster, and it's called the Loch Ness. Excuse me, did we just show you the Loch Ness monster? Yes, we did. See, that was no mystery, was it? And there's the hump that comes out. See, it keeps saying that's a head, but... Just won't let it go, will I? Okay, um, and this is a Cohen's Craft design, by the way. M390, best tech, and <clears throat> let's just get this straight right now. Best tech is simply the best. They're just simply the best. Okay, so now the discussion's over there. We don't even have to argue about it. We can just go on from there, of course. They said it is. It must be true. I saw it on the internet. Um, and so here's the best thing. And it comes in a nice box. It should because it's a nice price. Yikes. Okay. And it says the BT2205 Delta Loch Ness. Okay. And remember, this is the Ness Muck. Okay. Blade shape. Because is it a drop point? I don't know. Is it, is it sheep's foot? Hell no. Reverse tanto? No. Modified spear point? Uh-uh. So, and this is, uh, I mean, I, I looked at this and I go, I, I don't know if I think it's just ass ugly or the ugly that I like or the ugly I'm going to finally reject or what is this? And like a subframe lock and stuff. And I guess we'll took it apart and see what it looks like in there. It's probably riveted together there to, to uh, subjugate that thing to make sure that's uh, anchored there for the lock bar. Um, but, you know, I'm sure this is titanium in here somewhere. I keep sidetracking myself. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, uh, that's definitely magnetic. We'll check that out in a little bit. I, I figured it'd be titanium guts for whatever it is. 314 bucks. Come on, man. And, uh, of course, you're on White Mountain Knives. Okay? So what does that mean? LTK is your discount code for 10% off. It will B, below $300 if you buy one. And I just saw the other day the green one with the regular stone wash blade was back in stock. That's the one I kind of wanted, but then I got this because it was in stock. And I thought, I do love blue. So, okay, we can live with that. But here's your, your stuff. I mean, you got a 9-inch knife with a 4-inch blade. Okay, let's get back to this. So, you, the good thing about this... And this is a Cohen's craft. I said that, right? Design. And, uh, th you know, you can, there's enough of a cutout. You can finger flick that open and then before you cut your, your hand off. Okay. Now, you've got a lot of jimping along here. Actually, you know that cutout's easier to use, I think, than the thumb studs. Because uh, the thumb studs are kind of close up here to the pivot and it's a little bit more tricky eh, it's not bad but you know the further out you get the easier you know your leverage gets so uh, either way you want and the thumb okay so we we're all good there uh, you got jumping here you got jumping here and of course i think george washington sears who was named ness Mock by the narragansett indian that he knew. Um, this is 1821 when he was born. I don't know when he got named Nesmuk and all that stuff. But this was a blade shape that he liked for skinning. And he was a real outdoorsy guy and stuff. And at the time, uh, in the like 1840s or 50s or whatever, he was writing for uh, a magazine which later became Field and Stream, I believe. And I'll give you the link to that history of that. Okay, and I'll show you some stuff here in a little bit. But, so this is a historic blade shape. That helps a little bit. Otherwise, I'm saying, who made this ugly-ass blade shape? But, I mean, in a way, uh, yeah, I get it. I guess I do get it. Uh, you can crawl way up here. And, you know, the thing is, his thing, and I'll show you, it was a fixed blade. 
of course, and most of the Nesma-type shaped knives, like the Revo Ness, of course, Revo Ness is a folder, but are fixed blade knives, okay? Um, but this is interesting, isn't it? Pocket clip, right hand tip up, no, nah, left hand, get out of here. So I guess, you know, there we go, snubbing the lefties again. Um, this is kind of nice, this little, uh, little design cue here. And then the crazy G10, crazy, crazy G10. And you can do that. Oh my God, hold on. Let me see. I, I think I printed out all your optional optionals. See, this was notify me. It was out. And then I put notify me. And sure enough, I already got this one. And then this was back in stock. So this is the regular stone watch with the green crazy. There's the blue crazy. There's the white crazy. And then there's all these others, right? In my card, et cetera, G10, blah, blah, blah. And oh, here's the thing. Knives Illustrated did a thing about, you know, Nesma uh, knife history, et cetera, et cetera. And there you go. George Washington Sears, born in 1821. You know, he looks pretty good. I think that was taken last year. So, yeah, he's, he's all, yeah, I, I would like to age like he... And um, appeared in, what, <laughs> 1884? Okay, okay, never mind. So... Yeah, 1821, oldest of 10 children. Yike, Narragansett Indian, Nesma, blah, 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 and all that stuff. And then here's the stuff. And you could read this article. It's really interesting, the Trinity system of cutting tools. And he really liked using a hatchet. Because he goes, if you're going to do bushcrafting, you're going you're gonna to baton something through a branch. You don't need to. Just use a hatchet. Duh. Okay, so, and then there's his nest mug thing and his preferred folder knife back then. Way back then, before the internet. Did you know that? There was a time, even before rotary dial phones, before you even had to know your pronouns, okay? Yeah, there was a time. And people actually went outside instead of sat in the basement playing video games. Okay. They went outside and enjoyed the world, the world, a wonderful place. And this baby will get you out in the world right here. That's plenty of blade. Let's see how big that dog is. It's nine inches overall length. You just said it. Okay, but I'm going to prove it because you never know. They Sometimes they get these wrong. Okay, now, nah, there you go. That's at least 100 millimeters or more. Nine inches overall length. 22.7 uh, centimeters. Now, did they put some, how thick a blade stock did they slam on this thing? It's more than three. Yeah, three and a half maybe, 3.6, okay. Millimeter and 12.8 millimeter, 0.5. So it's really not that fat. Contoured, G10. Uh, I like the pocket clip. It's good. It's what it needs to be. And it goes in the pocket. I have done that much. Um, but uh, no, this isn't, hasn't been a very, uh, uh, you know, frequent carry for me since I've only, but I've only had it for like a week or so. But now I, it's pretty much not been something that I've preferred to carry. It's monstrous. And uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to see if this soaks in somehow and becomes something that, because it's big, so I want to love it, right? But I'm not sure that's going to happen. It is a very odd design. Let's put it on the scale while we ponder it. Ah, five ounces. That's right. I think I... I either weighed it or saw the weight earlier, a couple days ago, and I was kind of surprised it's only five ounces. It's a big knife, and it's a big, tall blade. 143 grams, yeah, I mean, and shoot kick, you know, and it's quick over the detent. Um, it's fidget friendly, and you can do a lot of different things, I mean... You know, you can finger flick, thumb flick, you've got, I mean, it's not a flipper, and it's not a front flipper, so, but still, yes. 
Wow. Interesting that they decided on this for this kind of a historic blade, but kind of taking it into that 20, 21st century this way. Hmm. And let's see. Let's get a piece of paper out. I mean, God forbid it actually cuts paper as well. Oh, okay. Yikes, I felt that one go. Did you see how straight and nice that was? Oh, man. That is nice. That is nice. Okay, yeah, that's beautiful. Did you see that? It just lays them out. Okay, so we don't get scary sharp very often on production knives in this here area, but we done got it now there. Ten four, good buddy. This one is officially scary sharp. Wow. Okay, so there's another plus for it, I guess. And is it centered? And yes, it is. It's hard to see the black one. That's why a lot of times for video purposes and stuff, I don't want to get black blade with black liners and black backspacer and stuff because it's, it's hard for me to kind of define things and I don't know how it comes out on the other end either when people see the video so but no it's uh mm, lock up is solid no blade play no lock rock nothing there it's pretty uh it's pretty good I mean it's not like 40 percent lock up but it's adequate yeah um detent well it's fairly light, but it's a big, heavy blade. Let me see. Yeah, that's easy. Okay, so really, I'd, I'd consider this a fairly light detent. Okay. And then, on the other hand, this is not a flipper. You can go a little heavier on the detent on a flipper. Um, but when you start getting into a knife where you've got to use thumb studs or finger flick or whatever, then you don't. I mean, you know, still don't want it too tough. If they would have toughened this, I mean, stiffened that detent up, it might have been a little bit more difficult to flick, especially a big, long blade with these thumb studs are not like in this area. They're way up here. And the closer to this pivot point, the more difficult it can be to leverage that out. And I see I didn't quite make that. Okay. But yes, it works fine. Ergos, they're good. I mean, pretty straight shot. Palm swell here, this, that, and the other. Um, yeah, feels good in the hand. It's just a little weird that this kind of blossoms display just uh, I could see that on a fixed blade knife. I'm not sure that I'm as uh, excited about it on a folder as I would be on a fixed blade knife. You know what I mean? And you could do some different things with a handle on a fixed blade knife to kind of make this more of a practical woodsy outdoor user. And this is not that, not at this price either. You know what I'm saying? Well, what do you think? Let's attack this thing. And you know what? Nothing from the front. So let's go backside. And I don't know if that's a nine, but I think it'll probably work with an eight. Seem to have a little play in it. Although I think yeah, that one, I probably need to replace that number eight in there. At some point in time. And are we got eights here? No. Hmm. Um, I don't know. I mean, you would think Best Tech would override the, the design -er on little things like, you know, T6 or T8 screws. I mean, that's okay. Cohen's Craft did the whole design. That's fine. But, I mean, if they're calling for T6s, it may be that they just kind of not getting the current trend of T8s or or Best Tech just defaulted or what. I mean, I don't know. But I mean, you could go T8 real easy on these. And it makes it, oh yeah, it makes it better when you really have to put some stuff to it. 
um, you're less likely to start rounding out the insides of torque screws if you have an eight as opposed to a six. Oh, wow. Okay. So, yeah, they held up and they came out, but... Uh, yeah, it would have been, I think, to their advantage to do something different than that. Now, let's see where we are because we have this subframe thing going on. And we got a mess. Let's uh, extricate this from here. Let's lay this down. We've lost our stop. And here is, it's not really a subframe lock, is it? It is just a liner lock. Okay. I'm sorry, I mean, I looked at it and it looked like, you know, like the Natrix or something like that, where they run it up and then they just have it anchored. But uh, this is basically just a liner lock. Uh, but it looks like, doesn't it look like the Natrix or Matrix, either one, you know, uh, for that kind of subframe where it's just stuck in there? Uh, but no. Uh, so this is anchored all the way across. It's a full liner. And then you got this flat spot here. So obviously the pivot comes through and it's a captured pivot. And then you got a ceramic detent ball, over travel stop. And so this is, um, hold on. So I've got a steel washer, but... <coughs> Hold on. Wow, that was loud. Uh, no. No, that's, that's, wow. Okay, that is, must be titanium. Oh, the hardware is steel. So that must be titanium. It's not magnetic. Let's put it that way. Of course, the hardened steel insert is, because I was going, why do I got that? If this is steel, I don't need this. Or they wouldn't need to do that. But obviously, I think this is titanium. Okay, let's put this back on without blowing the place up. Ooh, that's a strong magnet. Okay, back to ceramic uh, bearings. Kick those out. What do you think? I think we're good, and it looks pretty clean. Um, let's lay this down. Let's pull this pivot. Let's take a look. Okay, yeah, captured. But, I mean, it's kind of interesting. They didn't put a B or best tech or yeah, blah, blah, blah like that. Instead, they put their logo there where they really could have just machined it in here and left that alone, right? Um, because it, it's captured pivot, and that would also center their, their logo correctly. I mean, it could have worked that way. Uh, and then here's their backspacer. So let me grab my thing again. Okay, somebody... Well, isn't that something? Okay. So this here, liner, is magnetic. So they have a steel liner on this, which they might as well have done a steel liner here, right? Um, that way you wouldn't have had to add the hardened steel interface. Um, and, uh, hmm, interesting. So, but they did this as a steel, skeletonized steel liner. And I don't think this backspacer is, uh, steel. I think it's titanium. Yeah, there's no magnetism there. Nothing there. But baby, yep, that is. That's, okay. So, we've got a combination of materials. Really strange, huh? titanium here with a steel you know uh insert and then here all steel with a titanium backspacer go figure i don't know but that's the way they did it and you can see i'm um, looking around because i'm seeing yes i'm seeing the washer that they're going to use here because this is titanium but no washer provided on this side because this is steel, which makes sense. So, okay, I get it.
And here's the pouch, by the way. And it's a zipper pouch, and you get this, and you get a sticker, and you get a microfiber cloth, and what else do you get in here? And their little paperwork thing, okay? So, uh, I'm feeling around for extra, nope, no extra hardware or anything like that. So, there's what you get in the pouch. The Loch Ness. The Loch Ness with a Ness. Muck. Well, there's a lot of Ness in here. Loch Ness with a Ness Muck type blade. Okay. Cohen's Craft Design. And she's big. She's crazy. It's different. It's a little wonky. Um, so I'm still kind of noodling on it. Thinking, do I like this? Do I not like this? Why don't you guys sound off? What do you think? You know what we do? We love them knives, so you guys stay sharp.